March 13th, 2022. At least I can remember that because I had to work yesterday at the auction, which I didn't like. <coughs> didn't like that snow. I tell you, you couldn't even see the road half the time. Well, let's talk a little bit here today about the people of this world, what the Christians that call themselves as such when they really don't have nothing, when they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. We all know who we're talking about. Let's go to St. Matthew in chapter 15 when Jesus is speaking quite plainly and he gives it in parables because everybody likes story time, right? How many people like story time? All right, so Jesus spoke in parables yes. because he liked to talk and have stories yes. to explain himself and what he was talking about. It says, Then came to Jesus. Where are we in Matthew? Uh, Matthew chapter 15. 15? Then came Jesus, uh, came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which are of Jerusalem, saying, so, first you've got to be able to understand what a scribe and a Pharisee is. Scribes pretty much wrote down everything. They pretty much thought they were educated fools. They knew better than the rest of everybody else. You ever, how many people ever run into an educated fool? My dad used to label them way back in the 70s. He used to call people educated fools because they had their mental in the head. They had no common sense. They only got what they learned in school, they learned in university. Let me tell you, I've told you this before, just because you got a doctor in front of me, in front of your name, doesn't mean you're smart. That goes with mechanics too, there's a lot of licensed mechanics. It took five or six times to pass your license again, so maybe they felt sorry for them, I don't know. Doesn't mean you're smart. There's a lot of dumb mechanics out there as well. So the Lord was talking about educated fools. Well, you may not like that saying. Well, that's too bad for you. And I hurt your feelings. Oh, poor things. I don't care. Thank you, Lord. So this is what they came and they said to Jesus. They said they spoke right to Jesus. Because they see they thought that they were better than everybody. Scribes and Pharisees, even the Sadducees. I'm not going to go on about them because they're sad. You see. <laughs> no, no. But, but they they thought they were something when they were nothing. Well, so anyway, let's, let's go. It says, Why do you let disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. What a question to ask King Jesus. It says, and it says, But he answered and said unto them, This is Jesus talking. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Hmm. That's pretty smart, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Man's traditions, they mean nothing. You know what means something? The What's written in God's Word. Hello? Nobody out there? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What's going on? For God commanded and said, this is Jesus speaking. Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth his father and mother, let him die the death. What death? Let him go to hell. Because you don't love your mother and father. So is that not a Ten Commandment that was given by Almighty God to who? Which prophet? Moses. Moses. Go down, Moses. Go down to Egypt, man. Tell that Pharaoh that my people go. Ah, what do you think? Yeah. That's not bad. So it must have been pretty important that God spoke it. Honor thy father and mother, as we say to them. What's wrong with you, scribes and Pharisees? Did you forget that in your head? But Jesus wasn't, didn't say it that way. Maybe I would have said it that way. Being smart enough to know, right? Jesus was kind, yes, but he was bold like a lion. Bold like a lion. But he loved everyone. But you have to be bold, Christian. 
You can't to let people use you for a doormat. Hello? That's right. Jesus never allowed people to use him for a doormat. God certainly doesn't, God's word says that he shall not be mocked. God won't be mocked. Was Jesus a harsh man? He could be. He has been. Because let me tell you, when you get pricked in the heart, when Jesus tells you something that comes out of God's word, you may find it harsh because you're a snowflake. But you don't mind being chastised by Almighty God, which you're supposed to be when you're walking down the line. God will chastise you. God will put you up in a straight line and say, okay, I fixed you up, now keep walking on a straight line. And usually what we do, walk off to the left or right because there's something wrong with our alignment. We've got our minds preoccupied on this and preoccupied on that. And then God's got to knock the chip off our shoulder again, slap us around, clean us up. You think God's not harsh? He has to be to keep you in line. Yeah. Hello? That's true. Old yeah. Pastor John, he's, yeah. he's a harsh man. Yeah. Get out of here. For God commanded to say, Honor thy father and mother. He that curses his father and mother, let him die the death. It says, but ye say, uh, this is Jesus speaking to the crowd of scribes and Pharisees, whosoever shall say of his father or his mother, it is a gift, and by whatsoever that thou mightest be profited by me. He says, honor, and, and honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So you want to change God's word, do you? That's what he's saying to him. Now that would have pricked anybody in the heart. Jesus spoke to you that way. Kind of harsh, eh? but it's truthful. The truth hurts. Is that what he, is that what he used to say? Yeah. The truth hurts. Snowflake. Hmm. So what does Jesus say to him? You're being harsh again. Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy you, saying, The people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me? Oh, Christian, take a look at that one. You come on to church, you wear your big fancy hat, you wear your big fancy duds, you think you're better than everybody else that's sitting there because maybe you got a good job. Maybe you think you're better than a guy who has got nothing. You don't know, their don't know their heart. They can be richer than you. Right. Rich where? Right. In spirit and in truth and righteousness to Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Thank you. He says, ye hypocrites, you know nothing of God's word. You change it to suit yourself. Yes. That way it's, you don't feel so bad, right? You can't tell people the truth. They might not come to church and put money in the offer plate. God will take care of the bills. Hello? Y'all don't have faith? You don't think God doesn't own everything? He can provide. He supplies our needs, not our wants. And He wants God's work to continue. He will keep supplying that which we need to keep going. Amen. 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 There we yes. go. That's it. He said, The people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. Big swelling words, right? Yeah. But their heart is far from me. It says, but in vain they do, they do worship me, teaching of doc, for doctrines the commandments of men. They don't teach what comes out of God's holy word. Oh, that's a good word. That's but good. what do you do? You change it 
to suit yourself so you can teach him having itchy ears. Yes. Oh, yes. So that they won't feel so bad that they don't leave. Yeah. Where's the conviction in that? We need the Holy Ghost to take, give you conviction in your heart to keep you in a straight line. And if you can't understand that, there's something wrong with you. Thank you, Lord. You worship me with your lips. You give me lip service, but no heart service. Yeah. Okay. That's where it comes from. In vain, he says. God doesn't want you to come to church because you have to. He wants you to come because you want to come. He wants you to worship him because he, you want to, not because you have to. Yeah, amen. Amen. Don't come to church for the wrong reason. You want to stay at home and be a bum? Then stay at home and be a bum. And don't complain to me later on that everything's not working out for me. I don't get it. Everything's just coming against me. God doesn't answer my prayer. You better check yourself, man. Good word, John. Tough tea bags, right? Yeah. You don't know me. Well, let me tell you who does know you. Almighty God knows you. Amen. You can probably hide stuff from your husband or your wife or your significant other, whatever you want to call it there. Let me tell you what. God knows your heart. He knows you. And he knows what you're thinking all the time. All the time. What do you think about them animals? Yeah. What are you going to do about them? <laughs> he says, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. This is what Jesus is talking. Now he's going to talk. He's put the scribes and the Pharisees in their place. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. He said, Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of his mouth, this defileth the man. Right. Says, then came the disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? Yep. Who cares? A lot of people are these days. People get offended by just looking at you the wrong way they want to fight. You got too many Karens and Kevins walking around. Everybody knows what a Karen is, don't y'all? Yeah. <laughs> One lady walked up to a guy in a gas station and he goes, What are you driving this big old truck for? It's a gas guzzler. The guy says, Lady, I'm just trying to fill up my gas once you mind your business. <gasps> she said, Oh. She said, Get away from me, Karen. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Okay. Can you afford to fill it up and won't fill it up? It's none of our business what they do. That's right. It's none of your business what your neighbors do. Yeah. No. Is it? No. No. But we seem to stick our nose where it doesn't belong sometimes. And then you get a punch in the face. Yeah. And then you complain about it. He says, his disciples came to him and said, You offended all these Pharisees. And Jesus answered and said, in verse 13, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. He said, Let them alone that they blind, this is, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if they be blind, lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Jesus wants leaders today. That's right. That's right. People don't follow a boss, they follow a leader. Yeah. Preach I've it. told you this before. Preach it. It's good word. Good word. If you're that blind, you can't see what God's telling you. How are you supposed to be able to talk to anybody else about the Lord if you don't know yourself? 
You're going to lead them astray. There's lots of Christians who call themselves that. That's what they do. Because they think they know better. They're educated fools. They think, look at me. I'm somebody because I went to, I got a master's degree in the most prominent university in the world. Well, what do you do, Basil? Nobody cares. Sitting at the feet of Jesus is what matters. That's right. Spending time with Almighty God Amen. through prayer, supplication, fasting, all the things that you need to do. Come to church. Too. There's, a, there's a good one for you. Read and study God's Word. Show yourself approved on Almighty God. The same it for years. You want to get to know God? Start reading about Him. Start thinking about it. He's going to reveal himself to you. He will. He, he'll tell you. Seek me with all your heart. Yes, he will find you. Thank you. In verse 15. Then Peter said unto him, said to Jesus, Declare unto us this parable. I don't get it. Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? He didn't call him stupid. Don't you understand? You've been with me all this time and you still don't understand? So Jesus didn't have to dumb it down. He just said, okay, let's let the Holy Ghost reveal to you, Peter. Yes, amen. She says, do you not yet understand that whatsoever entereth in the mouth falleth into the belly? Like a nice McDonald's hamburger? <laughs> no, I don't eat them anymore because I don't like the they, found, they found that they have human pieces in there. Don't taste that good anymore. But maybe down in, remember in the 70s when they had McDonald's was serving kangaroo meat? No, you remember that? That they did. They fried up the old kangaroos in it. But anyways. He says, do you not understand that whatsoever entered into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast into the draught? But those things which were proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And yet they defile the man. This heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. If you got hatred here, what comes out your mouth? Hatred. Simple, isn't it? That's what he's telling Peter. You understand now, he says. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witnesses, blasphemies. Tell me that's not true, is it? It's true, even in the Christians. Yeah. So they call himself. That's why Jesus called them what earlier? Hypocrites. But these are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands, defileth not a man? That's what he's saying to him. So then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So says, And behold, a woman came uh, uh, of Canaan, came out of the same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Says, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. She's bothering us. Tell her to go away. See, according to the Jews of those days, those people in those places were a lower class of person, if you understand. And the Jewish people had nothing to do with them. But Jesus never said a word. Says, then came she, and she worshipped, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus looked into her heart and saw that she was genuine, that she was bona fide. She didn't know Jesus personally, but you know what she knew about? She heard of him. She knew that he was a real deal. But he answered and said, now this is scripture. It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. So he's using scripture on her. 
But see, she was wise. She knew the scripture too. And Jesus wasn't doing to be smart. And she says, and she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Do you get it? Do you get it? God has no respect for a person. Ready to fall upon the righteous and the unrighteous. Jesus loved her. He wasn't testing her. He wasn't being stupid. He wasn't trying to belittle her and say things he was better than anybody else. He never thought that a day in his life. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. He only had to speak the word. And the devil departed. What's wrong with you, Christian? Oh, I attended church for 50 years. And all of a sudden you get one problem with the devil and you turn around and turn a coat. Run around with your tail between your legs. Do you not know that there's power here? To put the enemy to flight. Amen. If Jesus could do it, and Jesus said to us, greater things that you'll do than I, what I've done. Right. So what's wrong? Right. Tell me what's wrong. We are. Yeah, we're the problem. Because we we're in the way. We we're in the way. It's time to get out of the way. God. Do what he has to do in your life. No? Yes? That's pretty harsh, isn't it? Oh, Pastor Johnny, you're just terrible today. You're so harsh on us. Oh. He says, Then Jesus took and he departed from thence. And he went to the, to the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat there. How would you want to climb up a mountain and just sit there? I don't know. It doesn't really say why. And all of a sudden, great multitudes came upon him. It thronged him. He went right up to a high mountain. Not to try and get away, but maybe he wanted some peace for time for himself to speak with the Lord. Meditate. Yeah, meditate. And then it says in verse 30, and the great multitudes came upon him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them all. Praise God. You don't think Jesus wasn't hungry and tired? He put that all aside to do what? God's work. Insomuch that the multitude wondered. When they saw the dumb to speak. And the maimed to be whole. The lame to walk. And the blind to see. And they glorified God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now. They are three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint away, faint in the way. Jesus was concerned about their welfare. Why? Because he loved them. Because he knew who his God was. He knew who his Father was. We have a problem knowing who he is. Sometimes we can't even walk and chew bubblegum. Like old Joe Biden. Don't even know where he's going. Did you not see that thing there where they were walking him up? They came up to get off the helicopter. He tripped up the stairs three times. Came down the stairs. I thought he was going to roll down on the ground. 